Welcome back to the 150K Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Graham, where we help take your dreams to six figures and beyond. Today, I have with me special guest, Joy Kristen, and I asked her this because I was like, how do you say your last name? And we've been playing around talking for a while on, um, you know, Facebook and all. I'm like, I got to have you on the show. But for people that don't know you, tell us a little bit about your background, who you are and what you do. Well, hello, everyone. I'm Joy Kristen. I I have a, a funny background. Well, I mean, not so funny, but most of my life I've been in finance in the banking world. And and it was I don't even know how many years ago now, four, four or five, some, somewhere in there, three to five, uh, where I decided that I wanted to kind of go the route of the the business route and, and get paid to write. I didn't really know how that was going to work or, I, it, you know, I found out what a copywriter was, didn't know what it was, trained for that, spent a lot of money uh, in that process. And then along the way, you know, realized I didn't have really a huge network. I knew a lot of people locally um, or friends I grew up with, but globally and like as for a brand, I didn't have that. So when it came time for me to be ready to get clients, I didn't um, I didn't have the network that I, that I do now. So really from there, I, you know, I got on with an ad agency. I did some closing training. I did private copywriting training one-on-one, which I highly recommend if you're in the same field and and then from there it just kind of exploded like meeting new people and then of course how that works is then you get introduced to new industries that you might not know nothing about but in that in that regard it just opens up doors in different avenues so I'm not really one of those people that has uh, a set goal in mind like five years ten years from now this is where I'm going to be I always just knew I wanted to write like that's Mm -hmm. that's I'm happy writing and that's it. So I am writing a few novels. I'm, I'm also involved in private equity, venture capital space. Um, I'm really a connector that when people think of me, they think of Joy might know somebody who knows somebody that can. And that's pretty much it. I love <laughs> that. But I love it because you're doing something that you love to do. You said, I'm a writer. I love to write. So because I love to write, now you do copywriting. You connect with people. You build businesses that way. Then you're like, I'm also in a a venture capital thing here, and I'm doing that there. But it sounds like you, and you even refer to yourself as a connector. It sounds like you go and you find people that can work together and just help bridge the gap. Is that kind of how you see yourself? Absolutely. And it was like that from day one, even before I started building um, contacts, is that uh, how I got a writing client would, oh, I would, oh, I know someone who who does this and and they might need it. So then I would refer, but never asked for anything. And it, and it came that way um, organically. There was no strategy there. But because as a result of that, I realized that's a real, um, you know, it's a strength. And so I I don't play with a lot of strategy. I just, I'm completely honest in my business and then who I meet, you know, I separate the bad apples from the good ones. And then I just see where it takes me. If I can't help you, or if I don't, if we can't work together, then I wish you well and good day type thing and just, Mm -hmm. just move on. But yeah, connecting is, that hasn't changed from day one. I love that because in my sales, because I teach sales, as you know, and I've been in sales for a long time. I'm always referring people away if I can't help them. I'm always like, look, if this is a good fit, we can do this. I'm your person. If not, totally cool. I like to make managers mad sometimes. And they're like, why didn't you close that deal? Because it wasn't the right deal for them. And I think that's probably one of the secrets you have is the fact that you've been able to connect with people and they know that Joy's not going to screw them over. Joy's either going to help them or give them to someone else that will. So I I love that a lot. I, I, that's my hope is that people know that. I think uh, sometimes you get, you know, when you're meeting a new contact, they might be someone who's really connected. They don't know who you are at at the beginning. It doesn't take long before they realize, you know, that, that it's a good connection here, like, and that it's worth pursuing type of thing. And that I'm not, you know, just blowing smoke or whatever, but yeah, I've gotten myself in a lot of situations where I end up on a call and I do question myself, like, how am I on this call right now? I don't know anything about this industry. And yet here I am. And that's kind of almost a, a weekly life for me. But I love mm-hmm. that. It's super exciting. And it, much like a podcast, you don't know what they're going to ask you. 
yeah you know you have to be prepared and have it be natural it's fun i love that i love it yeah yeah. Well, like, yeah. I think we connected. Was it Mike Wayne or was it someone else? I don't remember. <laughs> it might have been Mike because we both were commenting Probably. on his craziness. Shout out <laughs> to my boy, Mike. Oh, yeah. But it's always yeah. funny. Like, you meet people and I just take people at face value. I don't look at people of like, oh, though they have this, this or that. I just like, okay, how can I connect with them? And I've made so many friends by just treating them as humans, no matter if I knew they were super wealthy or if I knew they were super, I didn't care. I wanted to hear yeah. their stories, their life, their stuff. Is that kind of how you've approached things? Yeah, definitely. And I will say. In real life, I'm the one who's always smiling. I'm the one who talks to little old ladies and men and wants to hear their life story. Like, and I'm genuinely compassionate towards people. And I know that about myself. Um, but I will say like in business and how the years have gone, I've I've come to like, you develop thicker skin because you're dealing mm -hmm. with these kinds of people that the ego is to the roof. And I will say, I will not put up with, with, you know, I, I won't put up with certain treatment. Like I, I mm -hmm. does not matter who you are. I won't roll out the red carpet. I don't care who you are. Um, as long as you treat me with respect, you'll get it back. Um, so I've, I've found that uh, I think that gets you far when you start mm -hmm. a relationship that way, because then they know right away, okay, she's not a doormat or whatever. Yeah. And then it, 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 a different type of people you'll draw. So yeah, you will repel some people, but yeah, if that that's answers good. your question. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. But that's good because you have to think about it. You have an ideal client. Everyone's like, well, I need ideal clients. You don't want every client because some clients aren't going to work well for you. If they don't work with or listen to what you're doing or they don't give you the right story to write or they don't do the right things that will you know, help them level up, they're just going to be a pain. You don't want to deal with that. You want to deal with people that want to get better or want yeah. your help. Same thing in business and anything that you do. And I think we so many times want to have all these clients. No, I want to have clients that I can help. I'll get paid, which is great, but I'm helping them reach their goal first. So I love that as well. Right. You did mention also though that you write books and I like writing. I'm into that type of things. So what type of books do you write? Well, I mean, I don't have anything published yet, but I have, but it will happen for sure. I've got a few different on the go. The one main one is the business development and it, it, it speaks a lot about mindset and belief. And I'm kind of writing that one as I go and as I experience these different things in life. So it's going to be ever changing. But, it, uh, you know, it won't be too, too long of a book. I'm about almost halfway there. I'm excited about that one. I'm also writing a romance novel, which is hilarious because I do not believe in romance at all. And um, okay. and so that's why it's it's a real challenge for me, but I think it'll be good. And then I'm also writing a book about like paranormal, um, a story about abuse. And mm -hmm. that one's really tough. I can't pick that one up unless I'm in the mode for it, because it's, you have to be right. And then I am writing another book about just a short one, though, about the gold industry, because it, it, it's a, it's a world that a lot of people don't know much about. And it would just shock so many people, some of the things that you come across mm -hmm. on a daily basis. And it's like in the private gold industry. Yeah. yeah. So I, well, I'm involved. You in said that's interesting. So there's two of them popped out at me just for right now. Business book, I read a lot of them, whatever. Don't take that wrong. But you said I'm writing a romance book, but I don't believe in romance. So we got to dig into that a little bit. And to give you my oh, background, no. <laughs> I've wrote short stories before. I have a like a Viking adventure short story type of thing I've done in the past. I like writing. Like I'm into fantasy epic, that type of stuff. But cool. how do you write a romance story and you don't believe in romance. It's just like the unromance. Like you got to open that well, up a little bit more now. Uh, I mean, I've been married a long time and mm -hmm. like I've got kids. I don't know. I just, um, yeah, it's a tough one. I used to watch a lot of romance movies and read novels way back when, like way, way. Um, and now I just feel like I, there's no time for that. Like it's all mm -hmm. business now. And I feel like you, you see a person's true colors for sure. It's not that I, yeah, I, I, it's more romance. It's not that I don't believe in love. I just believe in a different kind of love. It's a love that yeah. benefits the person at that time. It's only if they get that benefit. Um, and then once they don't, it's gone. And I, and so, yeah, like I feel like even in business too, like where 
you're, you're in, in these relationships that you have with people in your building, you're able to build them when they feel like they're going to get something from you. Mm -hmm. Um, I know I kind of diverted the topic a little bit, mm -hmm. but yeah, like with, with the, the fact of me writing that one, it is, you know, that one's a little bit on the back burner. Um, I, I like challenges. So if it's something I don't believe in, I, I want to work harder to make it believable to someone. So I would want them to one day when it's ready, someone to open up the book and be like, oh my God, like this is amazing. And this is like, makes me believe in love again, even if I don't believe it myself. So yeah. yeah. No, that makes sense because you see the rom-coms, you see the TV shows where the woman doesn't do anything, but just have the guy chase her. And then the guy has millions of dollars, but never works. And he always knows exactly what she wants at the right time. And I'm like, this is not realistic. I've been married 23 years. You know, I try to do things. My wife, you know, we do data. We do all this stuff. And I'm sitting here going, I understand yeah. why people have misconceptions. Because you see the Matthew McConaughey, he wakes up out of bed. His teeth are perfect. His hair is perfect. Yeah. Whatever girls in the show is perfect. And it's like, yeah. But you, you said something else that I thought was more important. You're like, no, love is a choice. Love is being there for the person, choosing to stay with them, which is a different type of thing between yeah. romance and love. So I like that. That You just you yeah. perked my interest because I was like, oh. Yeah. You have to let go of the whole dream of like the white horse and the prince that's going to come along that's going to be perfect for you. I think people get really mixed up in that where they think um, they're waiting for that person that's just going to complete them and make everything okay. And that, and it just, it isn't going to happen. Like it might happen temporarily, but it will not last. And mm -hmm. I don't know about forever, like never say forever. Like they say forever, never say forever. Even when you're married, you don't know that that's going to be forever. You you don't know people change people. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, um, I, I, I kind of joke with my friends about this. I say, when I'm invited to a wedding or someone says they're engaged, my initial thought, and this is going to sound terrible, is not congratulations. It's, oh, my condolences. That I know that sounds awful and I don't mean it. <laughs> but like it, it's because then I think you're in for a, a long, hard ride. Like it, it, I'm sure it could be great. But and I also, too, believe in like very much like separate lives. Like you have your life and then the other person. Ha and it's not all together. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I, I, I understand walking. that. Yeah. Well, yeah. you don't want to be for everyone, but you said a couple of things there again, and I'm just listening to what you're saying. You said <laughs> they're looking for someone to complete them. And the only person that completes yourself is you. So that's exactly. the first part. And then the second is I, if I don't do something outside of what I do with my wife and spend time with her, what are we going to talk about? What are we going to interact on? What are we going to, you know, discuss yeah. like if we are always together all the same time and do everything together it doesn't that doesn't to me make sense like i, I was no couples that do it it's not for me either i could like yeah. my wife and i both know we love each other 23 years married i'm i told her pretty much if you want to get rid of me just take me out i don't want to start over again that's my little joke but um you know yeah. i don't i couldn't we couldn't be together 24 7 that would drive us both nuts yeah i think mystery is important and even in a friend in a friendship too like mystery is important. You don't want to be at their beck and call 24 seven that you don't want. They don't want that either. Like, and like, and you were saying it or before when you said the, the man chases the woman, like on the shows and then the, you know, it, and see, that's what I mean is that the man likes to chase the woman when he catches the woman, he doesn't want her anymore, or he might want her for a while, but she's got to keep pulling back a little bit and not always so readily available for him or else that's it. He can like, yeah. <laughs> the hunt is done. No, no, you're just, you're yeah. the hunt is done in that regard because he likes yeah. to chase. She likes being chased. And if that stops and that dynamic's not there, well, what next, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's yeah. interesting. Same thing with business. You actually just dropped the business principle there too. Same thing with sales. You can't hunt, 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 chase, 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 and not give them room to breathe. You can't, you have to have that dance. It's the same type of thing. Relationships are interwoven yeah. the human experience in business, marriage, friendship. You, like you said, you have to have the mystery, the dance, the ability to connect, but still make it interesting. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, I haven't been one that's loved the pitch, having to pitch someone. When, when I get connected with someone or someone refers me to someone else because of, you know, they were like, they, they thought the connection would be there. I love those scenarios. Obviously, 
you can't always have it that way um, where it works out that way. And, and long-term and like money wise, I could see that taking longer to get where you want to go with your goals. If you don't have a system in play where you're, you're, you're capturing leads and, and nurturing those, I get that. But, but yeah, exactly. Like, I think a lot of times you might be followed by someone a, a year, two years, never hear from them, don't even know who they are. And then they end up in your messenger and you all of a sudden they're your client. That's happened mm -hmm. to me for sure. Yep. Well, I think it's because you're putting out content, you're being authentic, you're showing up every day. So you're because you're doing the like trust and all the aspects of the sales process without having to pitch them. So when you actually get to that conversation, they already like you. They already know what you're doing. They already trust you. They're willing to buy because they've also seen the results you've had over a time period. We just try to make it too gimmicky or too quick. Or when people get online and want to start a business, they try to go for the juggler too fast. It's yeah. every relationship's different. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It it's it and especially too, like with a bit of a closing background, I used to I worked for a couple coaches, one being where I was him and his Instagram. And I talked to men that had problems with, um, with, with their weight and self-image and things. And he was the fitness coach. That was like one of the best experiences business-wise of my life. Um, because it was really cool to get into the mind of, uh, what it's like for a man to talk to another man, because it's mm -hmm. very different from a man talking to a woman. Let 100%. me tell you. And it's like they they have this love and bond, like bromance, like instantly. And there's no built, like there's no distrust or it's it's weird. And I just wish it could be like that. I wish it could be like that man and woman, woman, man. But it's not. No. So. Well, I think it's the dynamic and what people think. And as a man, I'll talk as a man. I'm not going to guess how a woman <laughs> would think of this. But from a man's standpoint, a lot of times when it's another man, we'll judge each other, but it's a different dynamic and we judge each other and then we talk and then we do that. But with women, we expect women to think something different of us or need something else from us. Or some men, when they look at a woman, they think sexually. Some men, when they look at a woman, they think, can I talk to her? How do I do it? Whatever their background, their thought process was on approaching women. So they have a different dialogue in men are normally unwilling to be vulnerable around women because most yeah. men get slapped. What well, most men get put down, slapped or whatever. Like if a guy cries in front of a woman, unless she's very self-confident, that normally is a red flag to women. They cut him. If a guy shows weakness in front of a woman, a lot of times that will in the man's mind, at least cut them because of how they've been trained. Boys don't cry. Boys don't do this. And, and I'm not that guy. Like I cry in front of my wife. I don't care. Like She's yeah. been with me forever. You know, I, I think that's that dynamic of what society puts on things because men are 100% judged by what they do. Now, women, you are judged too. So don't hear, I'm not saying, I'm not saying you don't have the stuff there, but men are judged by accomplishments and what they do, period. Yeah. Yeah. That's an interesting, it, and I've heard that before, uh, for sure. And it, it, it is sad a little bit because the woman, that's all the woman wants from the guy is him to open up. Um, I, I do hear what you're saying when you said not self-confident. Well, which is probably the majority of the world, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, men versus women as well. I don't mind a cry for sure. I would much rather have um, someone who can open up and share their feelings and say how they feel. And that's almost an impossible. I just never see it. There's, I don't know. I mean, I, think, I well, um, I'm yeah. intrigued. So let me ask you this because <laughs> you, you view it differently than me. As a man, when we, when we open up and all, most men I know if they've opened up to their girlfriend or whatever, into the relationship, it breaks off because if they show that weakness, mm -hmm. then the girl's idea, because I think it goes back to the, the prince that's coming to save them with the prince has weaknesses yeah. and kinks in his Alpha armor. Male, right? Yeah. 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 I'm wondering if that's part of it, if the Disney fairy tale lie has gotten us confused in the sense that Prince can never have any weaknesses, even though they do. And the woman even knows yeah. that they do, but that's still that opening up. I don't know. That's just a thought. Um, I don't know. I think it has a lot to do with upbringing as well. Um, mm -hmm. They're raised just so like I was raised in like a really unique household, like where if you if you love someone, you, you say it. And you can say it to anybody. Like I could say it to a stranger, like, I love you. And it doesn't 
make me feel weird. And it, you know what I mean? Like I can hug a stranger. It does not, but I find people have a real issue with saying those words um, or complimenting people or um, saying it. Yeah. And, and I just, it's, yeah, I, I, I think it's upbringing. I really do. I think it, they never were told as a kid that they were loved by their parents. So they can't do it as an adult. Well, that is a big, um, it's going to be a big blockage in life. Like it, it, I have friends that can say they love me. Um, you know, and then I have people I've been close with my whole life that can't. <laughs> yep. Yep. And I think they probably do love, but they just don't know how to share it. And it, they, they never will. They'll probably live their whole life like that. Well, I think it's finding the groups that you're in because like there's friends that I talk to online, even online, I'll, be, I'll tell them that I love them that like five, 10 years ago, I wouldn't have done that at all. I think sometimes you had to progress and learn and grow and become the person you're supposed yeah. to be and be comfortable with it. Um, but you yeah. said upbringing, you had a unique upbringing. So when you say unique, what what, what does that mean to you? Because unique is different to everyone. Well, I mean, you know, like maybe not so uncommon with a lot of um, kids it, it, growing up, you know, my parents divorced when I was seven. Um, but then I went off with my mom and we kind of like traveled around every, every year it was a new school. So I've lived a lot of places and always was the new kid. Um, so this is why yeah, it's super easy for me to be people because I had to, um, I was always, yeah. Like if I wanted friends, I had to be the one to make the first move because they're not going to do it. Um, and then just going along the way, like how I had mentioned to you before, that I don't mind talking about religion because I was raised, you know, my mom a Christian. And, but we used to jump from church to church. We called ourselves the church gypsies because it was like Christian churches, but all denominations, right? And so I've seen everything you can imagine. And so those are some really cool experiences. Um, I've even gone like where, because, you know, you have the Jehovah Witnesses and the Mormons that come to your door and then, you know, right? Like, you know what I'm talking about. Well, one time she had someone who called her out and said, well, if what you believe is the truth, then why aren't you going door to door and preaching the gospel? And so then she said, well, you're right. So we're going to do that. So she took me a little kid and we went door to door with our Bible and, and talked. This was so long ago. And and we and we did this and of course we had doors slammed in our face with people in their underwear opening the door and then we had yep. but you would it was a really cool experience though because we just did it for a little bit um mm -hmm. just to see what it was like what they had to go through so like i was raised very much like you look at the other person's situation that you you're not in their shoes but you try to picture and envision yourself mm -hmm. in their shoes what they have to go through and i was raised like very much like you question things you um, don't take everyone's word for it. Like you, you have to research for yourself to see what the truth is. Mm -hmm. So we would always jump from church to church, mainly because my mom would always find something the pastor would say that would piss her off. And so she'd be like, that's it. We're on to the next. He just said mm -hmm. this and I don't agree with that and, and that kind of thing. So, but it was, it was really good experiences because it shaped who I am, um, mm -hmm. you, you know, and then, just when, when talking about um, the relationship, she met my stepdad a few years later and I was raised. And yeah, like I said, we jumped around and we moved around a lot. Uh, and I was really close with my mom um, and just raised uniquely, uh, really close and like just able to share feelings and emotions so simply, um, but not so much with a male figure. So I don't really have that. So maybe mm -hmm. this is partly why I feel like men don't open up and they can't because right? So it, that makes sense. <laughs> well, no, a lot of that makes sense. So first I want to, we'll, we'll do the, I'm going to go to the end and then go back. I think the relationship <laughs> that you have with dynamics with like male women relationships, sometimes it's mother daughter bond is great. Father son bond is great, but sometimes it's different. Like my daughter, the 21 year old is like, we talk about everything. But when I was, when she was young, I would take her on dates when she was two or three and we would actually be present. So I wasn't on the date with her while she's doing something and ignoring her on my phone. I would actually talk to her and interact. Yeah. I think communication and love, I did with my son and my youngest now one as well. But on the church thing, on religion in general, if you don't challenge your ideas or beliefs, are they really your beliefs? I think so many times we get raised a certain way and we never challenge it or never look at 
anything else yeah. from the outset. So I would commend your mom for saying, no, at least you need to understand where they're coming from. What are they doing? We're going to go knock on doors. I've done it for door knocking for sales. <laughs> it's not a fun thing to do. Not and easy. you're right. People show up in their underwear and they do weird stuff and yeah. you're on their turf. But I yeah. think like we were talking about even before the show, if you don't challenge your beliefs or at least look into them, how do you know they're yours? Or are they just something that you've just been a societal thing that yeah. you've been told? And I also think that people don't debate enough. Like they don't even know what the word means anymore. Like you, because they feel like, well, I believe a certain way and, and it's the truth. And I know it's the truth. So you should believe the same way as me. Whereas they can't respect the fact that you were brought up in your truth. You believe it to be true. And you guys can't come together and, and just have a conversation about it. A debate, like a healthy debate, not a, I'm right and you're wrong. Um, let tell me about your religion and why you believe the way you do. And, but, but it's, it's very rare. It, yeah. it is. Well, I think it, it is starting to change depending on the groups you get into. What I found is the more spiritual the person is, the more willing they're open to talk to other people about different thoughts processes. It's great. It's typically the ones that are super stuck in their ways. And this is the only way I know it. And then even in the same thing. So we'll stay in because we're, both Christians and we're in this aspect, even if there's so many different denominations, well, if only one of them is right, which one is? And then does that mean everyone else gets screwed? I don't think God operates that way. That doesn't make sense. Same thing with religion in general. And I might get some people upset here, but that's okay. <laughs> how do you get someone to the point where they never heard about your version of it? Because some of your versions are only two to 300 years old. They never heard about your version of it. Does that mean everyone before you just automatically get screwed. I don't think, I don't think that works. I yeah. think you're a combo to what you know. Yeah, exactly. And, and it, it, you will get those few people that are like, Oh, what's this? This is completely different. Like my mom um, is much like that. Like I, I feel like whenever I get into it with someone on online or on a post about religion, I feel like almost tagging her and saying, Hey, can you take it from here? Cause I know, I know that she would like completely like answer any question that anyone has. Uh, and, and then they're always left like dumbfounded. Like that's what it was like when she used to invite the JWs and the Mormons in, she, they would talk all day and yeah, they probably wouldn't come back because they know they're not going to get anywhere with her, but it, it was a really good conversation where there was a lot of challenging going on, but in a healthy, respectful way, like, well, mm -hmm. if you believe this, then well, how does this explain that and stuff like that? So I definitely grew up. Yeah. In, in because of that. And I'm very appreciative of that. There were times when we were really poor and we had to struggle. We had to dig in the gutters for bottles. Like when my mom left my dad, it was, we had nothing. We didn't even have a phone. Um, but I don't regret any of it because it, it, it shaped you, it makes you a stronger person. It, mm -hmm. How could it not? Yeah. Because you're the sum of all the experiences you've had. So if you wouldn't have went through those experiences, you would not gotten to this point. I look back at my life and I've had a lot of hard, crazy shit. I have not liked a lot of it, but it's got me to where I am now. And just thinking of my story going from growing up in the country, poor, kind of a little bit different than your story, but like to I'm a really successful closer, not a podcast. I get to go do crazy, cool trips. And I'm sitting here going, 18 year old me would never believe I would be where I'm at today. <laughs> but now 46 year old me goes, I have so much more I can do. And I think it's always being grateful for what you have, but hopeful for what your future is to be to be held or inquisitive or whatever word you want to do. And that's the key. Just always learn, always grow and always be open because like in science, same thing, things change. You can't just yeah. say, this is the only way something goes because you could be wrong. So I should ask you this, because like for myself, I had like, you always hear about aha moments, pivotal moment where you had something very specific or even just a specific thought decision right then and there where everything changed. That's what happened with me. And it was like, there was no going back. I was absolutely a new person. And that was, this was it. And no matter what it takes, however long it takes, this is what's going to happen now in my future. And where I was a completely different person on the day before, did that happen for you? Did you have like a pivotal moment? Um, yeah, but it was a process. So I think I kind of have always questioned things. I've always been the kid to ask the questions that you probably shouldn't ask. 
I always would be like, well, why does it have to be this way? It just doesn't make sense to me. I'm that, I'm that type of person. <laughs> and I was going to different churches and I just didn't agree with something and asked. And instead of walking with me, working with me on it, I was just told, no, you're wrong. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense. Cause it, and I'm a very smart type of person. So like I it really begin to study and stuff. So I would like go back and go, well, the church father said this, 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 this. And I could have my debate document, all that stuff. And they just didn't want to hear, it, but they wouldn't give me any reasoning behind it. They're just like, whatever. I'm like, this doesn't sit right. So I went on my yeah. own quest to, well, what is it that I really believe? So like I grew up in church. I was in a bunch of different groups, different types of church, different denominations, whatever. That's fine. And it put me into the thing of, okay, I believe in being kind to people. I believe in people are not naturally bad, that they're naturally good. There are some bad apples, but I, I'm not in that concept of everyone's just horrible. And so in the moment you're born, you're worthless. That doesn't vibe in my head. And yeah. then I just went on the process of what do I really believe? What do I really want out of life? And then I just started questioning stuff. I started thinking, cause I'm a history nerd. I'm like, okay, cool. So being a Christian, Christ came about 2000 years ago, right? What about all the people before that? What about the billions of people before that, that never got to go to Israel or, or hear about that? Are they just all screwed? And that didn't make sense in my head. And I went in that whole process of, okay, I'm not the smartest person in the room, but I do understand if God is loving, like they say he is, then he set a path and plan for, he didn't just create a bunch of people to destroy them. That doesn't yeah. feel like in my head. And that challenging, I know hits a lot of people and they're going to be like, if they listen to this, like, really? I'm like, yeah, really think about it. Are you saying that the God that loves you so much that sent his son to die, just decided to burn all these people because he sent his son to four or 5,000 years later. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. I, I, again, yeah. And, and, and again, I, I'm not, I'm not anti-Christianity. I'm not anti like, I understand the concepts, the principles and all of it, but it's just like, you go through the process of life and you go through and you figure out, okay, what really worked for me? But I can, what works for me can maybe not work for you, but we can still be friends. We can still work together and still kind yeah. of understand and grow. And I think that's the whole human experience. That's the thing that people need to understand. We don't have to be right. Yeah. I, I know that was I a long see, answer. Sorry. No, I, I, I can see how people, um, you know, they, they lump people like into a church category. And like, I don't really love church. Like for one, when we used to go, um, I, whenever the songs come on and they do the singing, I just end up, end up on the floor in a blubbering mess. I just cry. I can't hold my emotion in when it comes to that, when they sing and stuff, if it's real and like powerful and mm -hmm. stuff. So like, I don't go to church, but that's not the reason why I would say the reason that will dispel people from even wanting to be in that um, category or, or have to do that every Sunday is the people that judge. Like I don't like, and, and, I don't like that. And like, I'm not going to sit there in a place where, you know, if I don't give enough in the offering or something, or, you know, if I'm not wearing the right clothes or whatever, you know, then, then I feel judged by the person. So like, I feel like God doesn't care about the church dynamic. He cares about the relationship with you aside from that, mm -hmm. nothing to do with church and people just focus on church. And so, and then I can see people lumping people in that religion category because they feel like, well, no, I don't want to be controlled and like made to go to church every Sunday. And I completely understand with those people what what they're thinking, because I feel the same way. So I get I that. It, 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 it changed over time. So it started in Jerusalem as a relationship. It goes to Europe, it becomes a religion. And here in the U.S., it's retail. That's kind of how I look at it. It's <laughs> like, if you go back to the concepts and the actual teachings of Christ and that type of stuff, it was about relationship with God. Love the Lord your God, love your neighbor as yourself. That was the two greatest commandments. That's what he said. Like, if you follow the Christ, that's what he said. And then I go, and I, like you said, there's so much judgment of, well, you, uh, you're you this, you're bad. And I'm starting to go, okay, so what are you hiding that you had to point out someone else's stuff? Because <laughs> if you too. are not having issues, you're not going to try and point out my stuff or someone else's stuff. And everyone has stuff. But the judgmental people, I think a lot of times they try to justify well, yeah, I did gossip and cheat or lie, but I didn't have sex before marriage. I did, like they'll find whatever their weird thing yeah. is that it is. And it, it's just, it's an interesting concept. Um, I let people figure out what works for them. 
and yeah. I'm not going to judge them because I'm not God. In my mind, I'm like, if I really believe in an all powerful creator, they're going to make their decision anyway. I have no ability to change it or not change it. So I like, there's so much we could go here on that one that, that yeah. just makes my mind like go deeper. Like, how about this concept? How can you save yourself? How can you lose being saved? If How can you save yourself? I can't save myself. So if someone save me, how can I lose that? Yeah, I agree. I just actually put a post up about that the other day, like just a question. And I said, don't answer if you guys don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, 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 I responded. Believe... I saw. Did you? Okay. Well, I'll have yeah. to look because I'm really bad at responding to sometimes. Um, so yeah, if you believe, if you can lose your salvation and I know that raised in my home with my mom, my mom, we do not believe that you can lose it. Um, obviously you can fall away. You can, this and that things happen, but a true conversion, how, like I liked what Damien put, I did. Did you read what Damien wrote? Damien's a friend of mine. I'm um, not sure. It was, I know you did this post a couple of days ago, so I don't remember okay. I saw his comment, but I haven't yet responded either. But I really actually like what he wrote because he said much the same thing um, where it's um, it once once it's real, like it you can't you can't lose it again. But also and on the same note, you spend your whole life living a, a, an opposite direction in an opposite way. That doesn't make a lot of sense either. Right. It's like, yeah, I believe in God, but I nothing in my life shows that that I'm a good person or <laughs> there's also that. So, yeah. It, yeah, and I don't know. I think it's just in general, like just challenging people in general. Like, like you, you were saying that people you think are born inherently good, like that they. I, I'm on the fence on that. Like, I feel, I, I feel can go both ways. Like, I think we're mm -hmm. we're selfish. Like, all of us are like that. We we all kind of want, we want something to benefit us, or or else. Mm -hmm. You know it, why I, is self? Well, let let me let me pick your brain here because I, I I like this conversation. Why is selfishness bad? Because if you haven't filled yourself up, if you're not whole, if you're not dealt with your own stuff, how can you help yeah. anyone else? Sometimes selfishness is not bad. It just gets a bad connotation because when yeah. you got when you make choices to go do things, you're choosing yourself, which doesn't mean it's bad or good. It's just a choice you're making compared to yeah maybe it's selfish. Just I'm choosing something that's going to hurt someone. There's it. Right, what right. is that? I think that's the the distinguishing. Yeah, no, you're you're definitely right. Like, someone could say because I work so much, like I work like twenty four hours a day. It seems sometimes seven days a week. I'm selfish because I'm working so hard, so I'm not seeing my family as much. Or they might say the opposite and and be like, well, because she's working so hard, she's doing this for her family. Regardless, it really doesn't matter how you're perceived by someone else we can never live up to those perceptions. Like I could mm -hmm. never do it. Like how someone perceives me to be. Sometimes I get in a conversation with them and then they think, oh, well, you don't seem like you're a bitch or whatever. And I'm thinking, oh, you thought I was a bitch. Like, where did you get that impression? Like I, you know, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, you're actually really nice. You're actually, I've, I've had people say, you're actually really smart. I'm like, thanks. Thanks for that. Like I thought- That was thought like was a dumb. gaslight comment there. That was like, oh, you're actually <laughs> really smart. Like, seriously? Yeah, I know yeah. I'm smart. Maybe you need to catch it now, Stephen. I think it comes down to choices we make because this has been like the, the threat. We take the knowledge and the information we have. We make choices off it. We live the best life we can. I think that's really it in a nutshell. We get to choose the life we live. No one else gets a vote. And a lot of people yeah. can't handle that because they want, like you said, control whether it's government, religion, schools, social yeah. groups, media, whatever. You can put whatever one in there. They all want to control because if you go yeah. outside the box, now you're challenging their dynamic, their paradigm. You're making them shift and look at something different because most people don't want to shift. Most people don't want to expand. Most people like their little cookie cutter boxes where they think everything goes. At least that's my thought on it. Yeah, that that's a good way of looking at it. Like, that's interesting. Actually, it makes me think of one of my favorite movies out there, The Last of the Mohicans with Daniel Day-Lewis. It's, mm -hmm. it's like one of my top, I could watch it a million times, but it's not just for the reasons you might think. I know there's romance in that movie too, but <laughs> that's not why I like <laughs> yes, it. I, I, I like, um, I like it because of the whole dynamic of the meaning behind it. Like you've got the French and the, and the English that are at odds. And then you have Daniel Day in the middle and he's a lone wolf. He's on his mm -hmm. own and he doesn't choose which side he wants to have allegiance to. 
And I just resonate with that movie like so crazy much because of who he is. He's like, you can follow me or you don't have to, but this is what I'm doing. And I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not choosing a side because you told me I have to. And like when you said, uh, you know, people just like to be in their little box and they like to be, yeah, I, I you're right. I can, I can't relate to that because I'm not that way. Um, but, but you're right. Like we have to realize that people like to kind of go in a herd. They want to, they want to follow, they want to have something they belong in. And, and I guess that's okay too. There's nothing wrong with that, but that just made me think of that movie. Yeah. I love yeah. that movie. No, <laughs> I, I've seen it multiple times. I, I love yeah. the movie too. Um, yeah. But I think that's just how people are because it's easy. The, the reason people get successful is because they follow the right process. The reason people are where they are is because of the choices they make. And I think that's why right now it's so easy for people to become successful because if you have a little bit of ambition and are willing to put in a little bit of work, you're going to outwork pretty much everyone else. And yep. it's not that you're – even trying hard, you just have, like you said, I'm going to pay my own way. That's the, I would say the American spirit, and I'm including Ken, like this this whole <laughs> side of the hemisphere here. Yeah. We're, 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 you said lone wolf or whatever, but we're, we're very individualistic. We're very rugged. We're very much, we want to pave our own path. I don't want to live a boring life. I would hate yeah. to sit at the end of my days, work, and is this, if someone likes doing this, it's cool. I wouldn't yeah. want to just work the same job for the rest of my life, do the same vacation, do the same stuff each because that doesn't that doesn't excite me. I want to explore the world, meet new people, meet new cultures, see different things. But I've always loved that. I've always been drawn to that. I've always been drawn to and it makes me that my my first pastor was from India when I was a little kid. I lived in a little country town then loved him to death. His name is Sam Chan. He married a white woman in the eighties which it was a no-no back then, like not <laughs> in my mind, but but in my mind when I'm little getting, because we're the product of what we've learned, I first pastor I saw was Indian, dark Indian man, white wife, love helping people, just kind and great. And I was like, so I never had that perception of, oh, you're this color, you're this way, you're that way. So I have to judge you differently. So I think for me, that's just been a, that was, I was just thinking like a pivotal moment of how I was formed or like my, how my process was formed yeah. because I grew up in the country. That was not like the mm. premier spot of, you know, moving things forward. It was pretty, you know, conservative country area. And I just thought that was an interesting thing after what you said. I'm glad that you had that experience that I'm, I'm a pretty big advocate of, of, um, you know, of, you know, being against racism like I've done some podcasts on them and and like I feel like no matter what these biases and these prejudices are that we all know and we've all been ingrained into our brain since we were young we have the choice in meeting each person each time and then just dispelling that and and then being proven like we don't have to be proven wrong we have to just pretend like everything like you're just another person and, and, and if they disappoint you and then show you what that bias that you had in the back of your head was going to happen anyway, um, that has nothing to do with it and no bearing on it. It's just like going into a new uh, relationship in, in business too, where you're holding the, your past grudges of things that happen and, you know, things where, where people went around you, circumvented you and, and, and you lost so much trust that way. You go into the next relationship like that, you're losing. You're losing right yep. from the get. Yep. But people do this like it's and it's the same goes for, uh, for that. Like I I run into it. I'm in a town like where, it's kind of a little bit of a bubble. Like it's um I joke around and say it's like the Stone Ages. They still write checks here, things like that. Like um yeah 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 like it and and so there's a lot of Stone Age thinking, and it just it drives me up the wall like. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't stand it. It's, I, I mean, I, I do understand your product of, of how you were brought up, but at the same time, we don't have to put up with that. 100%, like, and I don't, 100%. like, yeah, exactly. Like it, it's, and, and also too, like it, it, yeah, I don't know that that's a real rabbit hole. We could really go down for sure. Well, 
and, and I know we're going to be running up on a hard stop in a few yeah. moments, but my friend Brian Bogart said it this way, and I love it. He goes, you're not responsible for what happened to you. You're responsible for how you react after it's happened. So yeah. same thing with anything else. Maybe hey. you're raised in a home where racism was a thing, or maybe you're raised in a home of whatever that is. You are responsible for the choices you make once you have an understanding. Again, going back to your combo to what you know. Once you have an understanding, hey, that's wrong. You know, like a six-year-old saying something stupid is going to say something stupid because they just didn't know any better. But once yeah. you get to an age where stuff starts to make sense, and then I, I think that I, I know I harp this a lot, but it really just comes down to who do I want to be? Who do I want to help? And taking responsibilities for what I can control, which are my inputs, my re- interactions with people, and how I treat them. I just treat everyone the same way. If you're mean to me, I'm yeah. going to be mean back to you. If you're nice to me, I'll be nice <laughs> to you. That's it. You're a human. Yeah. We're all humans. We all believe yeah. the same. We all have the same thing. We all want our families to be well taken care of. We all want to have love. We all want to be accepted. Right. Exactly. And that's just it. And I think, yeah, people will give uh, people of, of higher power and that more of the royal treatment where they necessarily don't <laughs> to, uh, I maybe want that they they don't want yes men around them all the time they want people to be honest tell them the truth mm-hmm. and just treat them like an, like they would anybody I think yeah I try to do that as well um as much as I can is not not be starstruck and and just treat people the same way exactly like it's it's hard it it is it's but that's all you can do is control yourself and even that is kind of hard to control yourself <laughs> times for sure for sure so as we wind down where can people connect and find you joy so i i closed a few of my platforms just for the sake of being more organized but facebook um i I do most of my business on whatsapp um or or linkedin and so just just my name j-o-y-k-r-i-s-t-o-n and there's a few there might be a few profiles out there of me but the one with the most followers. That's the right one. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, no, I get that. I get that. Yeah. Any other uh, closing words for our listeners before I let you go? Uh, I would, I just really appreciate this call that we finally had. I know we were trying to make this for a while now. Uh, I just feel like if you're out there and you're, and you're thinking that you, you know, you don't have what it takes to, to make a big change in your life, that you couldn't be more wrong that you could be a completely regular person, not have a ton of skill. You might be good at, everyone's good at something. You might not know what it is and you need to build that to just go for it and work it around your nine to five job like I did. Uh, And no matter how long it takes, just a little bit each day and and surround yourself with people that are going to be supportive and encouraging for you. And, and, And no matter what that looks like for you, of what your goals are, that they can be achieved absolutely no question i love it i love it thank you joy for being on and like she said one step forward each day gets you closer to your goals remember it's your life to live make your choices and live well